so much for Thank your you. intervention. Uh, we're very happy to have with us um, Amira Halabi, Africa Coordinator for the International Alliance of Waste Pickers, and Madi Koina from the South African Waste Pickers Association. Very happy to have you both and, and to hear your input. Thank you, Manal. Uh, if Madi allows me, I will just take a couple of minutes to introduce our alliance. Uh, um, as Manal mentioned, I am Amira, and I work as Africa Coordinator uh, of the International Alliance. We are here in the Plastic Treaty, accompanied by uh, around 12 uh, workers, uh, waste pickers, uh, and uh, that's working in uh, waste picking from different parts of the world. Uh, the International Alliance of Waste Picker is uh, an international alliance of uh, workers, uh, is a union of waste pickers groups representing around uh, half a million waste pickers across 34 countries. And we are here uh, in this uh, INC and in this complex because we believe that we're having a kind of uh, historical chance for us to be able to change the conditions of work for many workers and especially waste pickers and other workers in the informal and cooperative setting. Uh, just to mention that uh, in the globally up to 85% of recycling chain workers are informal and many if not most of these workers depend on recovery and processing of plastics. In addition to that, more than 60% of the recycling chain directly relate and is uh, directly rely on the work of waste pickers. Uh, just to set a context, since so here we, we're presenting, we're coming from different backgrounds and we're talking about workers and so on. Um, just to be a bit specific as in terms of how do we define waste pickers at the International <coughs> Alliance. And allow me to read our definition. And the definition really takes into consideration not only the type of the work, but it takes into consideration the different ecosystems where workers and waste pickers work in, and it takes into consideration the different structures where waste pickers exist. So I will read. I will be looking at my paper. Sorry, no eye contact. So the International Alliance defines waste pickers in its constitution as following. People who participate individually or collectively in the collection, separation, sorting, transport, and sale of recyclable and reusable materials and products, paper, plastic, metal, glass, and other materials in an informal or semi-formal capacity as own account worker or in a cooperative or social and solidarity economy setting and as workers who subsequently achieve formal work arrangement through their organizations. Our description includes interim waste speakers, current and formal waste speakers who have new roles and engagement in waste speakers organization and who have been integrated into municipal solid waste management systems and continue to retrieve, sort and sell recyclables. So I will stop here and then I will hand over to my colleague Mandy and she will be able to walk us more into the realities of waste speakers, the realities that they live, the absence of recognition, but as well uh, we're always hopeful, therefore we'll be talking and sharing where, what our demand and hoping that through such panels, through the solidarity that we're seeing in the UN, we'll be able to achieve our demand. Good afternoon everyone, um, member states, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the room. Um, as uh, I've been introduced, I want to repeat again. Um, we work uh, in collection, sorting and transporting of recyclable materials, mainly plastic from the street, dump sites around South Africa and globally. As workers, we have a uh, historical contribution to the plastic value chain through our day-to-day -day work. Waste we can manage approximately 60% of the world plastic waste that is collected for recycling contribute to a more secular economy. Despite our contribution, we find ourselves among the most vulnerable stakeholders in the plastic value chain. We are frequently excluded from the formal labor market and marginalized due to stigmatization and um, way of waste and poverty. 
most of us are self-employed without recognition as workers, and as a result, without access to labor rights and other basic uh, human rights. If we can all recall, when we start um, this treaty, we had a role play with the waste speakers from here in Nairobi, who, show, who showcased their um, ability, their uh, talent. They can dance, sing, poet, um, you know, designs that they were wearing, but there's no one who is aware of that talent because it is in the dumb side. There's no one who recognizes that those people behind that waste, there are human beings who have talents, who can do uh, anything that anyone can do, but because of the, the, the situation or the form of work that they do it, people they don't think that there can be a talent that will be found there in the dumb side. Uh, as women in the sector faced, uh, face uh, particular challenges, because as women working in the, or in the dumb side, there are so many challenges that we face. Um, there are rapes, there is abuse, there is anything that you can think of that is happening in the, in the downside. But because of um, the way that we're living, or maybe the state of our, uh, of the high rate of unemployment in our countries, we are forced to be there. We have to be there because we need to feed our families. The challenges that we foresee one of the main challenges that we foresee in this sector is the arising of competition, especially through privatization of waste management, that in many instances are fueled by EPR policies and other circular economy investment that divert valuable material from us and also displace other workers in an informal economy from secure jobs, like closure of landfills without alternative. When the landfill being closed, relation with a legal recognition of our work based on recommendation 204, that includes the aspect of social dialogue and decent work. Second, just transition that allows uh, for our incorporation as waste pickers and other workers in informal and cooperative settings. As waste pickers and our workers uh, in an informal cooperative setting, our key demand for this plastic treaty is based on just trans transition principle. And in other words, <coughs> ending plastic pollution in a way that is as fair and inclusive as possible to everyone concerned, creating decent job and opportunities, and leaving no one behind. For this treaty, we are asking for the following. One, in cooperation of specific reference to a speaker in the text to acknowledge our particular vulnerability and our vital role in the material management process and systems. Clearly define the terms like waste speakers and our work, other workers in an informal and cooperative setting in just transition. This will help to, ens to enhance clarity and understanding. Thirdly, cross-referencing to just transition in several re relevant sections, including the objective section, to emphasize its relevance through the document, to ensure that all state, uh, state members mandatory undertake measures for just transition. And the role of NGOs within that civil society can play, can play a crucial role in ensuring the meaningful participation of waste pickers and other workers in inform an informal cooperative setting in policy making uh, through their advocacy agenda. Because we believe that as we work with them in, in the community, they are there to help us. Now, if we participate in whatever agendas they have, that will help. To ensure we speakers our voice are heard by, by we speakers themselves through pro proper uh, representation system, we think that we cannot um, hear or acknowledge our voice if we don't preserve, represent ourselves. We don't want anything that will be set for us without us. We need to be there around the table and meaningfully participate on any decision making, knowing that we are part of any decision that should be taken not on our behalf, but with us. Support with access to information and information sharing um, that takes into, into consideration the history 
historical knowledge and ex experience of voice speakers, knowing that the voice speakers do have expertise and they do have knowledge, even if they are there uh, at the landfill. We need to we need to acknowledge that they are human beings. They can participate on anything, and if um, we cannot uh, have or source out any information. NGOs are out there to make sure that the information comes to us. We do receive. If they have researches, we are part of community. We need to know. Lastly, the solidarity. Because as we speak as working in the community, we hope that the solidarity should flow between all the NGOs that are working in the community. Thank you very much. Amira, Maddie, thank you so much for this heartfelt um, uh, speech to, to our audience. I think uh, throughout this week we've heard a lot and um, you have a lot of supporters among us and your voices are extremely important and make a very loud case, um, especially for, for the treaty. What you just said is at the heart of the objective of this session on the socio-economic considerations of moving towards a different um, form uh, of work and